Good morning. Welcome. Would you join us in singing Joy to the World? And we sing Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found and he rules the world world with with truth truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories the the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. All right. Good morning. Welcome. You may be seated. You've chosen a good way to start off this new year. Happy New Year. Happy 2023. I gotta, I'm going to be thinking about that now every time I say the new year. Uh, 2023. And we are, we are getting started here today worshiping the Lord on this January 1st. And what a blessing um, It is to be here and to be able to do that. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your your care and your provision in the past. Uh, We thank you for what you're doing right now, and we thank you that we can trust you into the future as well. And we uh, we praise you this morning. We thank you for this new year, and uh, we we know that this new year uh, can be looked at optimistically because of you because of what you've done um, and what you are doing. And we pray that your spirit would be here right now working in this church today and, uh, and throughout this new year. In your name I pray, amen. All right, well, we're glad you're here. Um, also, uh, Reverend Mike Norris is here, uh, and, and he is going to be sharing a, a message with, with us this morning. Um, as you can see, maybe uh, Pastor Pete is not here today, uh, but uh, uh, we are glad you're here, and we're glad Reverend Norris is here, and um, uh, we've got our worship team here today, and we're going to be uh, sharing some songs. Uh, as far as announcements go, um, I have, I have what you have in the worship folder, so um, I know that there are uh, ways to give, and I do want to give a reminder of that. Uh, there's a little box in the back, and there's, there's the, the four-way slide. Maybe you've seen that before. Um, there's also um, a membership class that looks like it's starting up here soon, so if you're interested in that, I would reach out to Pastor Pete or the church office and uh, let them know that you're interested in that. Uh, and then there are um, some life groups, Bible studies, things that are uh, happening today. Uh, there will be Hope Squadron today. Uh, we'll have the kids go there a little later. Um, I know Zeta is uh, um, there to uh, be with the, the kids today and, and, and work with them. Um, they are uh, looking for some nursery volunteers. So that's something uh, that's been in that worship folder for a little while. But if anybody is interested in that, uh, please do reach out to the church office. But that's all we have for announcements. Again,
we are, we're glad you're here today, and uh, I know we're missing people who aren't here, and of course, uh, we hope that everybody's doing well in uh, watching us on, on uh, Facebook or wherever you might be watching us, um, and uh, those who are traveling, travel safely. Uh, but uh, we're here. We're here to worship the Lord. Uh, let's start off. We're going to sing uh, another Christmas carol, and this one, I think this song can kind of go any, any time of the year, really, but we'd usually just sing it at Christmas time. Um, but it, it, because it talks about the angels, but it's called Hark the Herald Angels Sing. So if you are able to stand and, and join us for this worship set, please do. If you'd like to sit and sing or sit and just listen, that's okay too. But Hark the Herald Angels Sing. by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold Him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. And the last, come desire of nations, come. Come desire of nations, come. Fix in us thy humble home. Rise the woman's conquering seed. Bruise in us the serpent's head. Adam's likeness now a face. Stamp thine image in its place. Second Adam from above. Reinstate us in thy love. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. In the darkness we were waiting. In the darkness we were waiting. Without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To the virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. We respond, praise the Father. Praise 
the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And to reveal, to reveal the kingdom coming, and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. Praise the Father. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. God of glory, majesty. Praise forever to the King of kings. the morning that you rose all of heaven held its breath till that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored, and the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel and shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, praise forever, praise forever to the King of kings. And we sing his praises this morning. Sing together. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. As we start this new year, the sun comes up. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, and it's time, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. We sing, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Your 
you're rich in love and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the lord bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name like never before oh my soul i'll worship your holy name and on that day and on that day when my strength is failed the end draws near and my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship his holy name. your holy name I'll worship your holy name Lord I'll worship your holy name Sing like never before Sing like never before oh my soul I'll worship your holy name I'll worship your holy name Lord I'll worship your holy name a way to start a new year be in church, to open our hearts and say to the Lord, we worship Him with all of our soul, and to sing like never before because of what He is, who He is in your heart and in mine. We worship the Lord this Sunday. And isn't it fitting that we start a brand new year worshiping our God this morning? Would you join me in prayer, Father? We thank you again this morning that from the depth of our hearts, we just worship you. As we come this Sunday morning, as we lift our hearts in music and song, there's just something inside of us that wants to say thank you for who you are and what you mean to us in our lives, that you brought us through another year, that you set us on course for a brand new year today, and that we can start this year in the presence of the living God and together can lift our hearts and our minds and our spirits and our voices just to say that we love you and we thank you. We worship you here today. We know that eternity will not be able to hold all of our worship and our praise. But as best we can, we open our hearts to you this morning and we say thank you for your living presence and ask you that as we start this new year, Guide our steps, direct our paths, touch our lives in ways that only God can do it. Manifest yourself to us again and again as we walk our way down through the year 2023. We don't know what's out there for us, Lord, but you do. 
And I pray today that you will help us as we look forward to walk in the light of your presence and to enjoy the the smile of your favor and to obey you in all the things of life that we may walk this year with the presence of the living God. So bless us today, I pray, as we worship you not only in music but as we open the word. Bless Pastor Pete and Rebecca as they are taking some time to renew and refresh themselves. May these be good hours and days for them and bring them back to us here, full and renewed and ready to lead in this new year that we are in. So today, speak to us, I pray, from your word, and may it be a good day because we are in your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and please be seated. Our children are heading out for Hope Squadron. Is that right? It, I yeah. got it right. That's Hope Squadron, Thank kids. You. Well, good morning, everyone. Oh, that was weak. Oh. Now, I know, I know you're still in mourning over the Bucks losing last night, but, you know, it's, it's Sunday. Huh? Good morning, everyone. Ah, uh, so much better. It's good to be in God's house, and thank you for the invitation to be back with you again. I was here probably maybe 10 years ago and, and uh, was able to fill in for, for Pastor Pete one Sunday. So thank you for, uh, you know, uh, 10 years you erased the memory of last time you invited me back, and I, and I thank you for it. You know, one of the things that uh, you never want to do with me is to uh, put a hammer and a saw in my hands. It is absolute disaster. Now, one of the privileges of life I've had is to take uh, 26 different work and witness trips, and I I, I love to do the work, but they learned early on in work and witness that I I was good at running the cement mixer, you know, doing all the heavy stuff. Don't put a saw in my hand. Don't, Don't give me a hammer. If something needs to be fixed at my house, Mary does it. That's my wife. She's the the fixer up around here. But the fact of the matter is, I'm a builder, and so are you. Every one of us is in the process of building a life. We're we're in the process of building a character. We're in the process of building a walk with God. And, And it's an individual kind of a thing that you and I will do by the grace of God in the year 2023. So as we start this very first Sunday of 2023, let's talk about building. I want to talk to us about house under construction because your house and mine, your life and mine is under construction. Jesus talks about that in Matthew chapter 7. Have your Bibles or your iPads or your telephone, however you read the Word. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 7, and we're going to pick up Jesus' discourse and the Sermon on the Mount toward toward the end of that, and we'll begin this morning in verse 24, where Jesus talks about building. So if you would, please stand as we look at God's Word, Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, and the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, but it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. Thank you, and please be seated. Uh, Long before I began uh, full-time ministry, I was on the faculty of uh, Marshall University in, uh, in Huntington, West Virginia, and I taught in the English department. So, so I like literature, and I want to start this morning by testing your knowledge of American literature, because you see, there's a very famous story in the history of American literature that is similar to the one that I just read. 
In the other story, three characters are builders. They each construct a house, and they are contrast between wise and foolish building. In the other story, each house has to face a test, and if the house has been built wisely, it stands, but if it's been built foolishly, it falls. Anybody here this morning want to guess what the other American literature story is? We learned it as children. What is it? Three little pit. We, I tell you, Tyler, you have a very literate congregation this morning. It must be the English department here today. Every little pig builds a house, and every house faces the big bad wolf. And one day the wolf comes in and says, little pig, little pig, let me in. And the little pig says, not by the... Uh, I just want to hear if I, if I could get you to say that this morning. Now, two of those little pigs built their house on junk. Maybe it was because it was easier and cheaper. Maybe they never stopped to ask a question. Questions like, will this house face the wolf? Will it stand the wolf test? Now, one of those little pigs built his house wisely, and it stands. That There's something about house building, something that is a metaphor for our lives that runs kind of deep. Now, when Jesus tells a story about house building, it's really one of those stories that's really two stories side by side. And when you and I get a parable like that, one of the teachings of Jesus, the best way to understand it is to see where the two stories are alike and to find out where they are different. Because, you see, when you find out where the two stories are different, that's the hinge on which the whole story turns, and then you can find out what Jesus is really after. So let's walk through the story together this morning, and the first thing we talk about today is every person builds a house. That detail does not vary, and it is not optional. Every person builds a house. Now, to really understand that, just replace the word house with the word character or soul or life. Because Jesus is saying to us today that you and I are constructing a life that's an eternal life and a soul that's an eternal soul, and the material out of which you and I construct that are the choices that you and I make. And what matters about your soul is really the fact that it matters in eternity. And you and I are constructing every day by good or bad, deliberately or casually, by wise choices or foolish choices. And every time that you and I choose, we are building an eternal house, and it's going to last forever. Now, the problem is, we little piggies, is that we have made a lot of foolish choices. Anybody here ever made a foolish choice? I'm going to do a mass confession in just a moment. If you've ever made a foolish choice, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand in a moment. But, but let me run through a few categories first, just to help jog your memory this morning. If you've ever made a commitment that you wish you hadn't, Have you ever said something you later came to regret? Perhaps have you ever dated someone that was not a model of character? Now, don't look around this morning, but if you've ever done any of that, raise your hand. Oh, my goodness. Have you ever made a foolish choice about time or about money or about behavior or vocation? Have you ever made a foolish choice about parenting or the stock market, or your spiritual life. If you had, would you raise your hand? Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn to the person sitting closest to you and say to them, I'm one foolish little piggy. Huh? <laughs> we all are building a house. And the Bible tells us very clearly, God is interested in the house that you and I build. Now, that metaphor is used a number of times. Paul, when he wrote to the church at Corinth, puts it like this. There are various kinds of materials that can be used to build on that foundation. Some use gold and silver and jewels. Some build with sticks and hay and even straw. 
there's going to come a time of testing at Christ Judgment Day to see what kind of material each builder has used. Everyone's work will be put through the fire so that all can see whether or not it keeps its value and what really was accomplished. Then every workman who has built on the foundation with the right material and whose work still stands will get his pay, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And what a day that's going to be. And it's really going to happen. And if the house there gets, that he's building gets burned up, the Bible says, he'll suffer great loss. You and I are responsible for our house. We are responsible for our character. We're responsible for our soul. We're responsible for our life, whether we like it or not. And in 2023, for every one of us, it's not optional in Jesus' story. Now, sometimes people do some goofy things with their houses. Uh, there's actually a house that is located outside of San Jose, California. It's called the Winchester Mystery House. Anyone here ever heard, heard about that house? Winchester, you have. Good. Uh, the woman who built that house, Mrs. Winchester, and when you take a tour of that house, the guide will tell you its story. Uh, apparently, her husband was the Winchester rifle guy, and she was the heir to all of his money. And he died, and their child died, and Mrs. Winchester turned to the occult. She developed a rather kind of an odd belief that as long as she kept building that house, death would be confused, and death would not come for her, and that she would be safe as long as she built the house. So she built this enormous house. People do that, you know. People get all wrapped up in their physical houses and build monuments to themselves. Well, in this case, 16 carpenters worked every day, and they worked for 38 years in order to build that house. Now, folks, that house contains 2,000 doors, 10,000 windows, more windows than the Empire State Building. The front doors alone cost $3,000. Now, remember, way back there, you could build a grand full house for less than $3,000, but she did for $3,000 just for the front doors. She spent that amount on the front doors, and they were used... One time, the workman who installed them walked out of them after installing them the only time the doors were ever used. You can go upstairs in that house, and there's some stairs that just lead up to the ceiling. And you can open the door at one of the, one of the staircases going up there that opens up to a brick wall. But you see, apparently part of the deal in building that strange house was she was hoping somehow it would confuse death. She was still building that house when death came, and death was not confused. It took eight trucks working seven days a week for six and a half weeks to haul away all the stuff she had put in that house. And then the truck made one more trip, and that trip was for her. Because, you see, no matter what kind of house you and I build, and there's some very impressive, impressive houses in this part of the world, one day that truck is going to come for me and for you. And that's a constant we're all building houses. And in 2023, every one of us will be building our house, our life, our eternal character there. Whether we want to or not, whether we build well or badly, we're all house builders. But the second thing I notice here is that every house faces a storm. The wolf comes to the door of every little pig. We are all house builders, and we're all storm facers. Now, if you read through the story here, you'll notice Jesus d describes two storms, and you'll find that the storm that hit the house that was built on the rock and the house that built on the sand are absolutely the same storm. 
You see, he wants to make it very clear, this is not about building a house where there will be no storms. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, Matthew 7.25, Matthew 7.27. Now, you and I would prefer a story about two climates, about two different places, with two different kinds of weather, like maybe California in winter or North Dakota in winter. The wise man builds his house in California. Now, I know of a guy whose parents lived in Rockford, Illinois. He had lived there most of his life, and eventually he moved to Southern California in order to go to college. And he kept telling his parents how great the weather was in Southern California and that they should move there because the sun is always shining in, in, in California. So eventually they moved there. Anybody remember just a few years ago how much rain they got out in Southern California? Remember the awful mudslides that they had? Anybody remember that there was a woman where a whole hill of mud had slid down and she was trapped in her condo by that mud and the workers had to break through the walls of the condo in order to rescue her. That rescue effort and that wall were shown to the world on CNN. That wall was the wall where this guy's parents had their their condo complex. That was the condo complex where his parents lived, and so the authorities had to red tag that because it was too dangerous to be there. The parents found temporary housing, and they were not sure at that point when they would ever get back to where they lived. And the whole thing was a mess because he told them in Southern California, the sun was always shining. Now, He did tell his parents there was no guarantee that if they stayed in Rockford, Illinois, a storm would not have hit them in Rockford. Because, you see, if you live in Rockford, Illinois, there are two problems that you face. One problem, if you live in Rockford, is that a tornado might come and huff and puff and blow your house down. The second problem, if you live in Rockford, even if a tornado doesn't come, you still live in Rockford, Illinois. My apologies to any Illini who are here today. So Jesus doesn't tell the kind of story that we would like for him to tell. This is not a story about how to find some place where storms never come. Now I know, I I know there are some people perhaps in the city of Medina, maybe some people here today who are thinking to yourself right now, Pastor Mike, you know, I'm, I'm smart enough, I, I'm rich enough, I have enough resources, I'm successful enough, I can take care of myself, I can engineer a storm-free life. But Jesus says, no, you can't. You see, in fact, his prediction, and Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, therefore do not worry about tomorrow. And what is his next line? Don't worry about tomorrow because it's going to be great. Don't worry about tomorrow because the weather is going to be really good. Don't worry about tomorrow because you can take care of yourself. No, he says, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries enough of its own. Matthew 6, 34. Today's trouble are enough for today. And what is Jesus' prediction? Trouble today, trouble tomorrow. That's the world in which you and I live. I think about a friend of mine, Mount Vernon, who walked into his office just a couple of years ago in Mount Vernon to a, to a company where he had spent all of his life and all of his career. And he walked into his office that day and found out the company was downsizing and he was out of a job. He's a really bright guy. He's got a wonderful family. But that was his vocational storm that hit. 
I think about that group of guys who had gone to college together. There were eight of them who had roomed together at one time or another in college. And once a year, some of them got together. And one of those guys had not been there for a while. And he was asking the others about their family and about their children. And he was the last guy in the group to get married. And he and his wife had never had children. So one night, they asked him, how did it all happen? And he talked to them about his dream, a dream he had had all of his life about being a dad. And then he explained to them why, for a variety of reasons, that dream had died and how that sometimes he wakes up in the middle of the night and he thinks to himself at those times, I'm never going to hold my child. I will never be a dad. That was his storm. John Ortberg tells of a time when he lived in Chicago in a cul-de-sac, and there was another family, a very great family, that lived right across the way from where he lived, and the husband of that family was named Andy. Uh, Andy was one of those guys, Tyler, who just never met a stranger. I mean, he was the glue of the whole neighborhood. Everybody liked Andy. And he was always also working on his house. And every time he finished a product, uh, project, he would invite all of his neighbors in to look at that. So he added a gazebo in the house and invited everybody to come in. And he finished the basement and redid all the floors in his house and had everybody come in. Every time he did something, all the neighbors came in. And then one day... An ambulance came into the cul-de-sac. It was Memorial Day, 6 o'clock in the morning, and they hauled Andy away on a stretcher. John went over and took Andy's wife to the hospital. Andy was 43 years old. He wasn't in the best of shape. Uh, They thought, you know, this just might be a good wake-up call for him. And John thought to himself, you know, I'll I'll start taking him to the gym, and we'll start working out together, and I'll kind of get him back on the right track. And They were all sitting there when the doctor came out and said, we're sorry. He didn't make it. He died. A heart attack. 43 years old, a wife and two teenage kids. You see, Father's Day is a real deal for them these days. Folks, that's just the way life is. Storms come into every life. And I say today because I know we live in a world where people think, you know, I'm able, I'm bright enough, I'm good enough, I'm religious enough. I go to church, I I pay my tithe, I teach a Sunday school class. You know, I can engineer a storm-free life. No, you can't, and neither can I. Everyone builds a house. You and I are building an eternal soul right here on the first day of 2023, and everybody faces a storm, maybe right now. And that reveals what really matters. Because you see what really matters in Jesus' story, the hinge point of the whole deal really comes down to this. What are you building your life on? What are you constructing your life around? Because, you see, life is not about storm avoidance. It's not about making sure circumstances are smooth and pleasant. That's why there's a rock and there's sand up there, and you can build your life on the rock or you can build it on sand. That leads me to a third observation, that is this. Everybody chooses the material for his or her life. You have to build your life on something. You have to make somebody your authority. And Jesus says, if you do that with me, if you become my child, if you make me the Lord of your life, if you say, Jesus, whatever you say to me, I will seek to understand and obey that. That's what I'm going to do. And as I start out on the very first day of 2023, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to do what you tell me to do with my time and my money and my relationships and my values. And then whatever storm hits you, you're built on a rock. 
and you're not slipping. And if you build your life on anything else, and you can build your life on other things, build your life on anything else, you're building it on sand. And one day, just as sure as I'm standing here this morning, a storm is going to come. And you may have a very impressive looking life, but it's going to blow away. Now, the obvious question when we hear this story that Jesus tells us, the question when we hear this story about the guy who builds a life, but he builds it on sand, the question is, how did he get into that mess? Why would somebody do something like that? Now, it's very interesting to me that that he did not set out to do something evil. Jesus doesn't call this man wicked. So what is the adjective Jesus uses to to describe him? It's foolish. He says he's a foolish man. That describes the human condition. Now, when our kids do something foolish, parents always ask the same question. We've done it for centuries, and I don't know why. It's a question designed to make sense out of the inexplicable, a search for meaning and rationality where it does not exist. It's a question of one word and three letters. And what is that question? Why? Why? Why did you do that? Why did you stick a spaghetti noodle up your brother's nose? Why did you leave your bicycle where the car would run over? Why did you do that? And kids always give the same answer. Three words. I don't know. Of course they don't know. If they knew what they were doing, they wouldn't have done such a stupid thing in the first place. Why? I don't know. Now, if you were to ask the foolish man, you foolish man, You have one and only one life to live, and you know someday you're going to die. You know that a storm is going to come to your life someday. Why in the world would you build your one and only life on the sand? What do you think he would say? I don't know. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Now, no architect would say, hey, hey, here's some sand. A storm's going to wash away any house that's built here, so let's build this house on the sand. Nobody would say that. It just happens. Nobody plans to live a mediocre life. It just happens. No couple getting married sit down one day and say to each other, you know, let, let's plan on ending up in divorce court. It just happens. No human being walks into a bar and one day and says, you know, I think I'll just become an alcoholic. It just happens. No man ever has a child and says, you know, I think I'm going to get so busy and so wrapped up in my career and be gone from home so much that my children won't know me and they'll carry a hole in their heart for as long as they live. It just happens. Nobody nurses a grudge and says to himself or herself, you know, I think I'm going to attempt to become a bitter and angry, resentful old person before I die. It just happens. Nobody sits down and plans to go to hell. It just happens. I don't know. I don't know. So Jesus sets for us this choice. He sets it for you and me today on the very first day of 2023. We are all house builders. We are all storm facers. And he says to you and me, you built your life. Will you build your life on a rock? Will you say, all right, Jesus, I'm yours. Bob Munger at the end of his book says, don't you get tired at some point? when you're trying to clean up one mess after another after another, 
Don't you get to the point where you say, you know what, Jesus? Why don't you just take over control of the house? I'm going to sign it over to you. I I want to have my house built on the rock. I want it to be your house. I want it to be your life. So let me ask you on this first day of the new year, have you done that? Have you done that? You see, he will do it. He will do it. He says to those who love me, he says, those who love me and obey my teaching, who hear my words and put them into practice, that's what it means to love God. It means to do what God says. And then we have this wonderful promise, and we will come to them and make our home. You see, it's not just your house and mine. It's our house with them. That's what Jesus says to us. So as we start 2023, with all the unknowns out there, with all the storms that you and I may face, Maybe there's a storm in your life today. I don't know. Maybe it's a job problem. Maybe it's a struggle in your marriage. Maybe it's a divorce that you've been through. Maybe you're wrestling with emotions. Perhaps an illness. Maybe an addiction. Maybe you have a child or a grandchild that you love so very much who's going down the wrong direction and you wish somehow you could fix it, but you can't. Maybe maybe you've lost this past year someone you dearly love. Maybe, maybe somebody has rejected you and, and your heart is bleeding. I don't know. But what I do know is that a storm comes in everybody's life someday. And then the question becomes, what did you build your house on? You see, you and I really don't want to wait till the storm comes to decide what's going to be the foundation for our house. The one foundation is to build my life, my character, my eternal soul in 2023 based on the Word of the living God so that as He leads, as He directs, as He guides, as He shows me the way, as He talks to me, I listen and I'll put His words into practice and obey to make 2023 a year of the blessings of God. Would you bow with me for a moment? I would hate to build my life on my family, on my job, or my money, or my reputation, or the church. And I hate, I'd hate to build it on anything else and at the end of life find out all I had was a pocket full of sand. But the hymn writer reminds us, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. How about this Sunday morning, the very first Sunday of January, the very first day of a brand new year. Let's purpose in our heart this year to build our life on Jesus and to build it on the foundation that never, ever, ever fails. That whatever you may face this year by way of storm, you can face it with a sure confidence. You've built it on the rock that doesn't move. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. 
Let's stand together and sing one verse of that old, that old gospel hymn. My hope is built on nothing less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. My prayer for you is, this year, 2023, will be blessed by God that your feet are on the rock, solid, firm, Whatever may come by way of storm, you'll know the rock never fails. I cling to the one who never has and never will fail. My hope is built on the solid rock, Christ Jesus. What a way to start a new year. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to find somebody not quite as good looking as you are and let them know you're glad they came to church today. God bless you and you're dismissed.